five comedy heroes you can catch right now on Now TV. Okay, Steve Carell. I know he's in like every comedy now. I think it's like Law in Hollywood or something. But he got his first lead role in The 40-Year-Old Virgin, where he plays an old virgin and a really sweet guy who loves action figures. First, you think this movie's all about his inappropriate friends giving him terrible advice on how to pick up some pretty questionable women? This is not a good look for me! But actually, it's a love story, and the love interest is Captain Keener, which is like near-perfect casting, because even though she makes him do really weird things like ride a two-seat bicycle and take her daughter to Planned Parenthood and sell all his toys... Godspeed, Colonel Steve Austin. It's okay, because it's Captain Keener, and she's lovable, which these girls are not. This movie has the exact right title, Mean Girls, because it's packed full of really mean girls, kind of like the ones you hated in high school. It was written by our next comedy hero, Tina Fey. And it's all about Lindsay Lohan, this not mean mean girl who becomes this plain old mean girl. Which is kind of ironic, because it's probably the last time she was a nice girl. It also has that girl who was in The Notebook, and that other girl who was in that movie that was just like The Notebook, except it was called Dear John. And of course, Tina Fey, who manages to teach a feminist moral of the story, and take her shirt off in the same movie. My t-shirt's stuck to my sweater, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. Maybe don't wear a bra next time. Amazingly, Will Ferrell manages to do the same thing in Anchorman, but with way more hair. This movie is kind of like that show Mad Men, except with bad suits and 70s hair and Steve Carell. I love Leo. It's kind of a love story too, because even though Christina Applegate hates sexist Anchorman, she still falls for him. I'm having very strong feelings for you, Mr. Burgundy. Probably because he plays jazz flute and has a dog, so he must have a soft side. But then they both go for the same job, and Christina gets it because, well, she looks like this. I'm not going to tell you what happens next, but I think you should find out because you're probably going to need to know for Anchorman 2. Speaking of sequels, here's Mike Myers, the king of sequels, because he made a bunch of Shreks and a gazillion awesome powers. But his first sequel was the follow-up to Wayne's World, Wayne's World 2, which is pretty much exactly like Wayne's World 1, except they had a bigger budget, so they could afford a load more celebrities, like a young Drew Barrymore and a kind of young Kim Basinger. Anyways, it all leads up to this big rock concert at the end, where they don't know if they're going to get any of the bands that they book, but if these aging shirtless rockers have anything to say about it, Wayne's stock is gonna rock. Party on, Garth. Party on, Wayne. And party on John Belushi, our final comedy hero, who was a blues brother and became godfather of college humor when he played Bluto in Animal House, which is kind of like how he lived his life, ah. except with frat houses. This movie is about a preppy frat house that Kevin Bacon really wants to get into, trying to shut down a not preppy frat house that Kevin Bacon doesn't want to get into. But the most iconic scene is when everyone gets really excited about togas. Toga! Toga, toga, toga. I'm not really sure why, but I think it's because seeing Bluto in a bed sheet is much better than seeing him between them. Speaking of fraternities, did you notice that all of our comedy heroes are Saturday Night Live alumni? Except for Steve Carell, but he was on SNL like 11 times last year. You know, because of that law. You can catch all five of these movies, plus the extra ones that we threw in there, in the Comedy Heroes collection, available on Now TV.